Hello everybody, it's Osha's is here. I'm going to try to do something here without getting the crud shocked out of myself, but what the heck, it's all in the name of science, right? Alright, so, keep an eye on this right here. You can see that. I believe this is one of them sodium bulbs. Also got on there, which you can't really see very good, is uh, on to each side of my have two neon bulb starters. Uh, well, two neon bulbs and a uh, fluorescent bulb starter. And a capacitor on each side. No specific farad range, just 50 volt capacitor. One's a 150 volt capacitor. That's not the big deal. Anyway, these are uh, two microwave oven transformers. And it's running right now about 12.3 to 12.2, 12.2 volts of uh, electricity off of uh, these two little batteries right here. And it's running off of this circuit down here. It's a uh, cheap Chinese uh, uh, one, 12 volt to uh, 220 volt uh, AC inverter uh, board. I will turn the light on and show you uh, another one so you can get an idea what it looks like. Anyway, I suggest if you tinker around with this particular ID, you're really careful because I about laid myself out underestimating how powerful these little things are. But I got not one, but two uh, microwave oven transformers running off of this circuit right here. And if you look inside there, there's, uh, I believe they're either transfers, transistors or MOSFETs. I hadn't even took the time to pay attention. But anyway, they got a relay right here. So when you hook your 12 volts to this side right here, the relay kicks on and kicks the power on. And I'm using, uh, let's see, yeah. B and the, the positive right there. The first two legs on this side right here. Let me put my fingers over the two. Right there. Those two right there. One in the middle and one on this side. And I'm running both of the microwave oven transformers parallel with each other. And they're stacked on top of each other. With this little circuit. And the key is I've been running this for quite some time. And these transistors or MOSFETs, whatever they are, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even look. Doesn't even really matter right at the moment. But they're not even getting hot at all. All right. One slightly warm to the touch, but that, other than that, they're not getting hot. And so when I touched on the body there, yeah, gonna make a liar out of me now, right? There we go. Alright. Not actually the best way to try to light those things up. And... If I can find it... Here's a fan. This will cause the relay to go crazy, but we're going to all in the name of science, right? I hope you can see that fan. One there. Anyway, the fan's going. I'm surprised the relay didn't go crazy on me. But that's uh, running on the high voltage side of the AC. And once again, if I can find it. Uh, 
There you go. And the bulb lights up. Alright, so whatever frequency range this is running at right now, there's actually a little adjuster screw on there where you can actually adjust the frequency. I don't know how far in and out you can actually adjust it, but you can. But nonetheless, at the frequency range that it's running, those aren't even getting hot. And so, you're able to energize it into plasma. And if you feel the bulbs carefully without shocking the crud out of yourself, you can feel they're hot. They're hot. But yet the transistor's not hot. And now I burn out a whole lot of these uh, resistors that are connected to these uh, neon bulbs because it was pulling too much current. So I'm making this video because I think it's worthy to look into. You want to get some of these cheap. Uh, Chinese uh, inverters uh, they're about six dollars and something on eBay really reasonable for testing purposes if you burn them out you're not going to feel too bad about it but uh, nonetheless uh, they got some pretty good capabilities for what they are and I've got some really good ideas that I want to share with everybody on how energy actually travels and if you uh, want to take it a step further to what these here are actually capable of. So I'll get that doggone thing on the... These are actually laminated, so you got to find a spot. They're not laminated, coated with something. Don't burn it. Let me just go down here. All right, go make a liar out of me now. What the tarnation's going on here, man? There it is. Now it's lighting up. All right, so you can see that uh, sodium bulbs lit up in there. It's got a really good plasma arc inside of it. And if you're actually just not really connected. You can see a difference so between that and some spark gap ideas that I got if you look back at the old mercury arc rectifier and you actually uh, have a uh, system built up to where you can extract either thermally the heat energy out of the inside of that with that plasma or use it to rectify it, uh, DC which you can actually see these are DC capacitors down there and they're actually being charged up because it's going from the high side of the secondary the high voltage side of the secondary and down just gr grounded right to the base of the transformer and there's two transformers and before I hooked them both in parallel I was able to get enough magnetic flux from one transformer to the other transformer where I only had one of them connected and I was still getting a high voltage on each side but to ensure that it wasn't just being transferred from uh, one metal core to the next and it was actually getting uh, flux through the coils I uh, connected them in parallel and they ran seemed to run better than they did before but uh, it tells me that I can pulse these coils and build customized uh, transformers that will actually get some current out of them and the input side of it doesn't have to be massive I mean these aren't I don't even know what the wattage is on them but they're they're hardly draining anything that's 12 12 uh, point two volts on there and uh, like I said, that's, it's not drawing enough current to get those transistors or MOSFETs, whichever one they ended up being. They're, they're not even getting hot. Still warm to the touch. That, that, one's it, that one there is actually even cool. This one's just slightly warm. Just barely. barely. But 
anyway, I thought that would be worthy of sharing with you if you're interested in doing some more research on it. Um, the whole key was to try to build a coil driver that could drive these transformers uh, with, uh, you know, low input as far as, you know, 12 volts, whatever those battery uh, amperage ends up being. But anyway, 12 volts and being able to get that much uh, high voltage out of there. And like I said, if you try this experiment, uh, be really super careful because if you ground onto that body while you touch that right there, it's going to light you up. And I'm telling you what, it, it, it hurts. It's painful. So always practice electrical safety. Uh, don't learn electrical safety by accident. So anyway, that's what I had to share with you. Two microwave oven transformers running off of one little cheap inverter. Off of two little legs right there on this side and that side. And I had it a midpoint ground on another system that I was running and uh, it where you put your midpoint in there and then your other ones on each side over there and it worked out as well but uh, this seemed to work out a lot better so with that said peace and love everybody take care